Hi my scholars, welcome to my school channel. My name is Alexandra and in this video we'll be looking at the topic Concord under English grammar. We'll be exploring the meaning of Concord, the types of Concord and the rules of Concord. Please stay with us, do not go anywhere and we'll be right back. So welcome back to my school channel. We'll begin today's lesson and do not forget the topic is Concord. Now I've outlined three objectives for today's lesson. Number one, we're learning the meaning of Concord. Number two, the types of Concord. And lastly, the rules of Concord. Now we'll begin with the first objective, which is the meaning of Concord. Now simply, Concord is the agreement that exists between the verb, the subject, and numbers. Okay, so we have the agreement between verb, okay, subject, um, by subject we mean the first person, the second person, and the third person, okay, then number, we mean, is it singular? Or plural. Okay, so it's the agreement between the verb, the subject, or number. So number applies to verb also, number applies to subject also. So it's the agreement between the verb and the subject. Now move to the next item, which is the types of concord. What are the types of concord? Three types of concord have been identified by scholars, and we have Grammatical concord, number two, we have notional concord, and lastly, we have proximity, proximity concord. Now, see, let's take a look at each of those types. Quickly, grammatical concord is simply subject, subject, subject verb relationship. Here we want to look at how the subject agrees with the verb. If it is a singular subject, then it should go with a singular verb. If it is a plural subject, it should go with a plural verb. So here basically we look at grammatical structures of sentences and we look at how the subject should agree with the verb grammatically. Number two, we have notional concord. In this case, the verb in the sentence would agree with the subject based on context, meaning, or one's view. One's view or one opinion. So, in this case, it is situational. Okay? It will only agree if the person wants it to be in that certain context. And this applies to certain types of noun, like the collective noun. The collective noun or uncountable noun. These are nouns that we can't really tell if it is singular or plural, especially collective noun. Take for instance the noun crowd. It, co it can function as a, a singular um, noun or a plural noun, depending on the context of usage, depending on the speaker's point of view or the speaker's opinion. So when I say the crowd is noisy, yeah, I'm talking about a single group. I mean a single group. But I can also say the crowd were noisy. Where here yeah, will suggest that they are members of a group. So I'm talking to individual members that make up the group. So here I'm looking at it from the plural point of view. So here it is based on the speaker's opinion or the speaker's um, view. So this is notional concord. For countable nouns, we have nouns like evidence, advice, 
these are singular but then they can be written in a in a plural form where you have a piece of advice it is measurable okay a piece of advice a piece of evidence okay all of these are measurable so here we are concerned with one's view or one's opinion about certain nouns okay so proximity is the last type of concord and here the verb in the sentence agrees with the subject which can be the pronoun or the noun that is closer to the verb so here we're looking at the closeness of a noun so we can have so many nouns in a sentence we can be referring to so many people in a sentence but then the verb will only support the subject or the noun or the pronoun closest to it okay so this is proximity concord so now that we've looked at the types of concord we'll move to the rules of concord now all of these um, types have been expanded to create several rules so all of these rules are in agreement to the concept concord do not forget concord is the agreement that exists between the verb the subject and number do not forget also i mentioned that number exists in verb and numbering exists also in subject so when we talk about the number in verb quickly for example the verb speak and speaks okay so okay let's have it here so this is singular and this is plural for verb okay but when we have the subject maybe the subject um, boy this is singular and this is plural okay so this is the concept so this is for the verb and this is for the subject so quickly whenever you see s after a verb it tells us that it is singular but reverses the case for subject or nouns or pronouns whenever you see the s after it signifies that it is plural so this is simply what i mean by number in verb, in verb and subject so now let's move to the rules let's start with first rule of concord now we title this subject and verb concord and what does the rule state when the subject in the sentence is singular the verb should also be singular also when the subject is plural the verb should be plural this is quite self-explanatory for example she is singular we have goes which is singular verb so she goes to school every day and it says the girls the girls here is plural go is also a plural verb so the girls go to school every day so we can see examples supporting this rule now let's move to rule two subject and object concord now when everybody or everyone anyone or anybody is used the object must be singular not plural so this one is centered on the object so everybody knows is or our name now we've had a lot of speakers say everybody knows their name their name is incorrect so the correct expression to be used is is or are do not forget when everybody or anyone or everyone anyone or anybody is used the object must be singular no plural so this is singular his or her there is plural it's the plural form for his or her so the correct expression should be his or her because we do not know the gender in person so we have to use um, both and that is why we are using or to tell us it could be either of a male or a female now if anyone comes to see me ask him or her to wait not ask them we've had a lot of second speaker second language speakers say them ask them to wait but the correct expression should be him or her okay so this is a singular object now let's move to the next rule but before we look at that we have a special package uh, for, for this uh, video which is the longer version of this video all you need to do to get access to this longer video is to subscribe for the special package and how do you do this 
all you need to do is you click on the link in the description below it takes you to the my school website there you'll be required to subscribe please go ahead and subscribe so you can enjoy the rest of today's objectives thank you for joining us do not forget to hit the like button click on the subscribe button and lastly tap on the bell notification to get informed as soon as we release the next videos